Thanks everyone for sticking around for a long day. Uh, definitely I'm my first time attending this uh, urban computing workshop and I definitely see there's a lot of synergies uh, between the you know, previous presentations and the research we are doing at the, you know, the National Lab. So my name is Ken Jin Hong, I'm a staff scientist with the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab and so my co-workers are Yi Xing Chen, Seng Hun Li and Mary Ann Pierre. So mostly we are doing, uh, it's about energy efficiency in buildings. So buildings may not as uh, interesting as animals or people because they don't move, <laughs> right? But trust me, buildings change. Because also, I think if you uh, think about the energy use for the whole country in the United States, so the building sector consume 40% of the total energy. So it's a big deal. If you care about the energy, you know, climate change, so I think the building sector definitely is, uh, you know, offers a good opportunity. So I'm going to talk about some of our work about you know, how we build data, modeling, analytics, and, and tools for a city to support a large scale building energy efficiency programs. So you know, if you look at the US, you know, our new construction is less than you know, about 2%. So if we want to reduce energy use of buildings, we would have to look at how we retrofit existing buildings you know, to reduce energy use. So, you know, the, the current uh, status is that cities, you know, do retrofit one at a time. So it's probably about like a couple hundred or thousand buildings, for example, in the city of San Francisco. But San Francisco has, you know, 200,000 buildings. So imagine, you know, how long does it really take to retrofit every building. So these kind of, you know, practices does not really uh, provide a feasible way for us to achieve our energy and, you know, a climate change, you know, goal. So, you know, if you look at the cities, depends on which city you're looking at, you know, they all have different, like, you know, focus or ma major problems, you know, to, you know to, to deal with. You know, it can be health problems, it can be water issues, air quality, it can be job, it can be, you know, buildings. So, you know, and then, I, so I mentioned, you know, if we look at the different uh, cities in the U.S., you know, they all consume significant amount of energy, you know, it's from 30% to 70%. So particularly in the city of San Francisco, they consume about 42% of total energy. So it's more than half. And I think New York City can be more. So that's uh, one of the questions we try to address is how can we provide guidance or support for the city to reduce you know, their building energy use by 50%, basically cut it by half. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Do we have the technology today? Yes, we have. But so what are the things that are missing is data analytics. So, and, and the web-based platform, they are sort of free and easy to use. So that's why we are, you know, trying to develop this platform. So it's called City Building Energy Saver. So this is a screen capture of the web platform. So actually it's a citybs.lbl.gov. It's you know, open to the public. So, you know, in the middle you can see, for example, this just shows about 500 buildings in the San Francisco Financial District. And then every building, if you click on it, it shows the details of a building, about the building type, total floor area, when it was built, and location, obviously. And then, you know, it also shows the baseline energy use of this building, total electricity consumption. And if you have the real data, yes, that would be good. But, you know, as I think we're dealing with the, you know, struggling of data, getting the real data, even just energy consumption of building, it's still a challenge. You know, there's still privacy concerns. It's just sometimes beyond our imagination. But I think in, in California, the California Energy Commission is, uh, you know, uh, has some new laws regulate. You know, people have to disclose the energy use, consumption of the buildings. You know, it's not like something you can keep it private. And also, you know, the, so you, when you look at the buildings, then it also shows the, you know, basically compare with your you know, other buildings and look at your energy use intensity. So it's color coded by the energy use intensity. And then we also, you can select all different building types because these 500 buildings, it covers in you know, office, and retail, and you know, hospitals, and you know, all these different types, you know, residential, you know, apartment buildings. And so it depends on what kind of application you work on, you, know, you can filter the buildings. Sometimes you say, well, I'm working on this particular project. I'm very interested in buildings, you know, built before 1980. You know, so you can very quickly target those buildings. And then you can do your analytic, and then you can visualize like in you know, different metrics, like total energy use of buildings, total carbon emission, the peak demand, or the potential of energy savings. 
and that will be very useful to support the city's energy efficiency program because they're interested, right? I have this amount of capital to invest. So where are the buildings I should target first so I can you know, achieve the most cost-effective way of energy saving or you know, carbon reduction. So this is the platform that would help cities you know, do uh, support their programs. So basically the CDBS uh, provides some you know, scenario analysis and for example you can evaluate and prioritize all the different energy retrofit efficiencies. And particularly question like you know, in San Francisco, you know, there's still a lot of single pan windows. So for example, if we replace all the windows in San Francisco with double pan windows, how much energy can you save? Well, in this particular case, San Francisco is fairly mild climate. You know, window replacing might not be a good solution. But these are the kind of things that the platform can answer. You know, for example, you replace all the lighting in the city with LED. Then how much energy you can save, right? And how much is the cost? What is the payback? And also can look at the climate change impact on the whole building stock. Energy use, occupants comfort, and what about the heat wave? If you look at the downtown of San Francisco, those small office buildings, you know, many of them still don't have any air conditioning during the summer. So I think most of the time I work in the city for about nine years before I joined the lab. So usually about three days of the year, you know, quite not comfortable, but you know, three days, so we tolerate. It's about, you know, it's okay. But if there's a heat wave, like two waves, you know, hit the city, what happens? Because right, either you have to close the office or every office have to go to Home Depot or something, buy a new air conditioning. And that will create a huge, you know, problem, not just the, you know, whether you can get enough air conditioning installed, you know, uh, in, in a very short period of time, but also creates a huge demand on our existing grid. So those impact, how can we evaluate quickly with this kind of models? And you know, in the future, we're also building some features to support our urban energy planning. If I'm going to build a new district, or you know, redevelopment of a district, it's a very uh, big redevelopment in San Francisco, this is a hundred point shipyard. So there's you know, hundreds of acres of new development. So, you know, what kind of new energy systems, district systems, you know, that should be, you know, in place, considering infrastructure change for the next, you know, couple of, you know, decades. And then the, the city also has a benchmarking, how the energy consumption of this group of buildings compare with the other group of buildings. So that we know where are opportunities, you know, to do the, you know, efficiency you know, improvement. And also the potential of renewable energy. So, you know, for example, the city of San Francisco, again, has a you know, very aggressive renewable energy goal, like they want to have, the, you know, all of electricity from renewable energy sources you know, by you know, 30 or even 50 percent by 2030. So then the question would be, if we install, a, you know, the PV, you know, solar photovoltaic on the all the available roof area in the city, how much electricity can you produce? And what's the contribution of that to your renewable energy goal? So these are all very high level you know, policy goals the city would have to answer. I think currently, you know, there's tools to build private you know, consulting industries, but you know, based on a spreadsheet, they are not based on very good data or analytics. So that's why you know, you know, from lab point of view, uh, you know, we're developing this kind of uh, you know, platform. So to support those kind of analytic modeling, we actually build on very detailed modeling and simulation. You know, captures very dynamic and energy balance of buildings, but also consider in interaction between buildings and the urban climate. We all know the urban heat island, right? You know, the downtown cities, you have experienced very, you know, much higher air temperature than the rural area. So those kind of interaction has to be captured if we want the physics to be right and accurate. And then how about it linked to the transportation? And I think it's interesting presented here, it's about a human mobility because we want to know when people arrive in a building so that we can precondition your spaces. When you arrive in office, then it's comfortable. We want to know when, you know, most of the people in a particular space so that we can provide, you know, the right amount of outdoor air, fresh air to that particular population. We want to know when the people will leave the building so that we can pre-shut down the, air, you know, the conditioning system to save energy. So there's a very strong link about, a, you know, the human mobility and the building's, you know, energy uh, problems we are dealing with. And then there's also economic about investment, you know, people's behavior about purchase of energy efficiency equipment, about people's uh, behavior in buildings, how they turn, you know, switch lights and, you know, open, close windows and, you know, those kind of things. Also, you know, it's the behavior side of it, but it is part of the things we are dealing with. And then the platform we are building will be based on open standards. 
I think this is a big issue in our buildings industry is, you know, there's a lot of consulting company and they build all the analytic and tools and data using their own standard, which does not, you know, work very well with other systems and very difficult to exchange data. So we are building, what we are building is uh, based on a city GML and this is an international, you know, OTC that represents the Open Geospatial Consortium standard. So basically, it's an international standard to represent and exchange in you know, 3D city models. So it's got all the details of a city, buildings, trees, those trees, you know, your furniture, water bodies. So imagine, uh, you know, I think maybe some of you know this BIM, building information model. So it's got very detail for one building, but the city GML has got all the details for a whole city. It's like, you know, a different scale. So this shows how software architecture, three layers, there's a data layer, there's analytic you know, cake simulation layer, there's also a use case layer. So on the top, yeah, again, I think there are lots of data that's need to drive this kind of analytic and platform. So weather data, so these are very detailed weather data, like 87, 60 hours, and about 2,000 variables, temperature, humidity, solar, cloud, and you know, all, all, lots of things. And, and also, you know, if you want to look at, uh, you know, the climate change impact, it's not just last year's data, it's also, you know, a couple of decades, so you can look at the patterns of weather change. And then there's building stock, so you're talking about 200,000 buildings in San Francisco, New York City, it's about 1 million buildings. So every building has, you know, lots of characteristic data, but also has energy consumption data. You know, for example, in California, most of the buildings now, we have smart meters which basically we call electricity consumption at every 15 minute time interval. And the natural gas is about every day. So if you have this kind of data for the last 10 years, right, you know, aggregate together is a huge amount of data. And then obviously then how we can extract the data and create this kind of data set. And then, you know, we have simulation engine, Energy Plus, which is a very detailed building energy modeling tool. Has been, you know, we have been developing that for the last almost 20 years. We supported by the Department of Energy and then you know build some of the you know SDK tools that drive our city BES. And then you know then you can use for these different yeah, use cases like do energy benchmarking, urban planning, retrofit analysis, but also looking at smart meter data themselves can also identify you know operation improvement opportunities. Like you know, your office building by your nighttime energy consumption is almost the same as daytime. That means some of the equipment are running unnecessary during the night time. So by looking at your low shape, you know, and then compare with others, we can pinpoint lots of the operation improvement opportunities. And obviously then with this platform, it's very easy to visualize all different metrics, you know, using your, your 3D, you know, uh, information. So uh, uh, some, a little bit more information on CDGML. I think, so I, look, I mentioned it represents all the different urban objects, you know, terrain, building, transportation, all the network. And, and it, it is, you know, provides like what you call like a various uh, levels of details. You know, for example, uh, like uh, I think they just have an example. And also allows you to find a new object, different ways of aggregate, uh, you know, objects. And, and also allows you to define your domain knowledge using this application domain extension. Like in our field, building energy modeling, you know, the CDGML provides the topology, geometry, but we need lots of HVAC systems, lighting systems, you know, all those detailed things. It's not in the CDGML, so it has to be in the you know, energy demand in the ADE to have those kind of extra information. So this is just an example of how uh, CDGML represents buildings. You know, at a very simple level, level zero, it's only just like a building footprint. You know, either at the ground level or the loop level. And then at the level one, it's like a shoe box. Right, and then level two, then you add all the facade information, the roof. And then level two, level three, then you have the facade, the windows, exterior shading, and then most of the detailed label is level four, and that's about the label that provides the interior spaces layout and all the details. So these are, you know, every, uh, so it uh, provides lots of flexibility because in your city GML, for the whole city, it can be a big file. So it allows you to have different levels of information for different objects. They can, you know, coexist. Basically, they drive different type of applications. Some would need label four, some may only need the label, you know, one or label two. So that, uh, that's uh, very good flexibility. And it takes a lot of effort to create this kind of uh, city GML for a city. But once it's built, it can drive lots of applications for urban, 
uh, you know, studies like urban planning, you look at land use, you know, disaster management, when a disaster happened, you know, how people move and what, you know, the things like that. And, and emergency response, like indoor navigation, we can do an energy assessment for city management, look at the noise, you know, propagation, you can do, you know, modeling on the, you know, urban air quality, microclimate. So this is just an example of how we consolidate the data for the city GML. And it's an, a, a project we're working with city of San Francisco. Yes. And so the, on the top, there's all this uh, data from various you know, city departments, like uh, you know, building footprint, land use, parcel data, you know, all the cities, energy ordinance programs, and then we, you know, how we do the mapping. Because a building and parcel, you know, the relationship is not necessarily one-to-one. You know, a building can multi, you know, occupy multiple parcels, a parcel can have multiple buildings. So one of the key challenges, you know, seems very, you know, fundamental is that we want to have a building to have a unique ID. Like in the US, every person has a social security number, but for building, we don't have such. And that creates lots of challenge. So we are working with the city to create a new data set so every building has a unique record. And once you consolidate the data, then you can drive you know, different types of you know, applications and data can be represented in different form, like you know, CDGML can be you know, geotation or some other format as you need it. So this is the last slide. So just to summarize, I think I, I like uh, Dr. Zheng's presentation, Sui BMW, and I think the B is big data, big city, and big challenge. And definitely that's the area we're working with. We see the data challenge, you know, data sources, data structure, data quality, how you can you know, massage all those together. We are also you know, seeing the modern challenge because we are trying to integrate different domains, not just end building, but also urban climate, you know, the human you know, mobility, so how these things can work together. You know, they are not necessarily quite the same you know, granularity of data and the simulation as well. So we are, if we want to simulate one million building in New York City, in an affordable time, for example, in three days, and in the two very detailed modeling, it's an exascale computing problem. So we also talk to our, you know, computing science, our national supercomputing center. If we need, we can, you know, use that to do this kind of research. So again, this is a quick summary of, you know, the research we are doing in the space. Again, I think I see there's a lot of synergies with, you know, the, you know, the projects presented here. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.